About five or six years ago I put up a video about a home built uh, rototiller that I put together with some junk I had laying around and an electric motor. If you want to see that video I'll put a uh, link up here where you can go find it. But the reason I'm doing this right now is because I had some questions about the performance of that rototiller and whether it really did the job. So let me go through and show you just how good it works and it still does work. And it's like six or seven years old now. Now here's that same rototiller about five years later. And uh, I still use it every year and it works really good for me. As you might be able to see, I've uh, tilled up the land, the ground here and over here. And uh, I'm going to plant potatoes in here. And uh, to me, it's very reliable, dependable, absolutely maintenance free because you don't have to mess with any gas or oil or anything like that. And plus, I'm in a greenhouse here. And, uh, you know, the, that's the reason I have it is because I had this junk laying around and, and I wondered if I could put a, uh, a electric motor on this uh, old rototiller that I had that had thrown a rod and uh, I'd had it in the junk pile for 10 years or more. I got it from a friend uh, about, oh man, it was about 30 years ago. I used it for a few years and then of course the, uh, the, uh, the through the rod that was no good anymore so it laid in the junkyard. So how old is it? I looked at it here and I found you can barely read right through here. And I won't bring the camera over here because you can't see it with the camera, but it says it's a uh, Western Auto Stores uh, Wizard. And I looked that up and, and uh, there is a little serial number plate on it or a model number plate on it. And the best I can tell from my research, this was probably originally manufactured probably in the late 60s sometime. So it's really, really old. You can probably hear the sound of the things rattling. It's kind of a windy day outside, so some of my greenhouse uh, structure is rattling a little bit. But the question that I was asked was related to its performance and whether a two horsepower electric motor could replace the five horsepower. As near as I can tell, originally this one here did come with a five horsepower gasoline engine. And uh, to answer that question, I, uh, I can tell you that I've used it, uh, oh, look at that. that I have used it a lot. The tines turn a little bit slower than what you'd get with the gasoline engine, but I've been very satisfied with the use. It'll uh, dig down deep if you want it to. If you hit very dry soil, a clay soil that's very hard to, to till up, it'll, it'll go through it. But what you'll have to do is go through it very slowly, but it will chop through it and the motor won't bog down or anything like that. So I guess you could say the, the downside of it is that maybe it won't go through the soil quite as fast as a uh, gasoline motor might. Uh, and that's kind of debatable in my eyes, but maybe it won't, but it will go through it and it'll go through it reliably and dependably and it won't overheat and it won't get uh, a problem with it. As long as you gear, you use a gear ratio or a pulley ratio that's correct. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. But I've been happy with it. I've had it for five years. It's worked very well. Now let me just give you a quick demonstration of how it works. Now I know this isn't a thorough demonstration because uh, I don't have much space right now. Uh, just the way this thing is built, you can't put it in the soil deep enough to make it slow down even a, a two horsepower electric motor. Now I'm going to demonstrate that right now. Plug it in. Now, just to reiterate, this is a normal, this is just a regular 120 volt uh, AC current, just like most people have in their houses. This, I want to get in behind this, so I'm going to bump this forward here a little bit. So here we go. All right, now, now that I'm behind it and in control, uh, let me make sure the camera is, uh, in the proper place. Now, keep an eye, keep an eye on the tines and how fast they're going. Now, a gasoline uh, rototiller, a gasoline engine rototiller, you can make the tines spin faster. You have to, you know, basically uh, run the throttle up and down, or and make the tines spin as fast as you want. This one is just constant speed, but they're certainly fast enough to do anything you want. What I'm going to try to do is show you this thing going deep into the soil. 
and um, and uh, so that it doesn't change its speed. So watch carefully here. Let me just get this up here so it's okay. So there it is. I'm I'm holding it off the soil. Now I'll, I'll lower it down into the soil. What I'm going to do is kind of hold it in the same position. Now watch. So there it goes. Now I'm going to lift up on the handle to make to get it down really deep. And you notice there's no change in the engine speed or sound or anything. See, look at that. And I'll hold it back. Now I'll just well, let's let it go forward just a little. Let me pull it back and you know, get into this fresh dirt. There we go. As you can see, it's, it's kind of there. See, I'm holding it back and it's. Uh, Okay, now we'll just let it go forward a little bit. I'm getting this all on camera. Now we'll let it move forward. Now see how it's going forward? And it's cutting that soil pretty deep. So you can maneuver this so it'll do that. I don't know if this demonstrates uh, clearly what I was talking about, but that's the idea. Now, can't go back through this because it's already been... <laughs> It's already been tilled up and that would be no fair. That dirt I just went through was hard packed. So um, anyway, that's what I want to demonstrate is this this is not a lightweight uh, device. It's uh, it'll do heavy duty work, at least for a tiller. So I mean, this, this is a little bit of fresh soil. You can see we'll go down even deeper here. And to get it this deep, you have to you have to hold the handles up, so it's almost off the wheels. But see, so it just goes right through it. Yeah, it's, I'm getting it even deeper now. But, there. Let me see what there we go. It does. The what I want to show you is it's not bogging down or even changing speed or anything. The point of all that is to show you it. It runs differently than a gasoline engine would. A gasoline engine, you know, you can hear it rev up and down as you hit the, the, uh, all the tough spots in the soil and so forth. This thing doesn't rev up and down. It stays at one speed. If you're going to convert one of these things, and, and I'm sure that this one originally had a, probably a five horsepower Briggs and Stratton motor on it. Uh, well, you can see the size of it, and normally what they come with is what it had. But this is a two horsepower electric motor, and it's 120 volts, like I said about four times before. What I want to show you here is this is the uh, original pulley on the bottom. You can see the size of the pulley on the bottom. This one I bought, and you, you have to size it so that uh, it spins the tines at the speed that you want them to spin. Now, that one, you can kind of get an idea what that is. I guess that pulley on the bottom looks like it's five or six inches in diameter and this one here is well it's probably oh I would guess three or three inches in diameter now if you get a bigger pulley here it's going to spin the tines faster but it won't have as much digging power you could maybe bog it down if you did uh, get a bigger pulley up there you get a smaller pulley it's going to uh, of course spin those tines slower and you, but you'll get a lot more power. Now the only way I've ever seen this bog down, slow down, or whatever you want to call it, is if, is if it picks up a rock, you see, and if the rock gets lodged in here somewhere in the works where you're, you're pulling it up with, say, that tine goes under, picks up a rock, and it jams in between here and the, you know, the axle of the mechanism there. Yeah, that'll stop it course you know because it can't get through a rock but that's the only thing that'll stop it I've never seen it slow down change speed or do anything like that no matter how deep you go with it and I routinely go at least you know as deep as the axle on the tines there I, I usually go that deep but you could make it go deeper if you just held on to the handles and you know lifted it lifted it off the back wheels back there and it'll just keep going. It'll, I don't know how deep it'll go. I guess there's a point where it'll be too hard to hold the handles. I don't know. But uh, 
But anyway, what I'm trying to say is two horsepower versus this is a two horsepower electric versus five or six horsepower Briggs and Stratton gasoline engine. Uh, <laughs> I would think this one, if you if the tines run fast enough, like you've seen, this one here will go through anything that the gasoline engine would probably do it better. It'll just it's just constant speed. Anyway, I hope that helps. All right. Now, just to make sure we're comparing apples to apples, the tine width on this from end from tip to tip is, I just measured it, it's 24 inches, and the tine diameter is uh, from tip to tip here, uh, it's 13 inches. So that's the size of the machine, and I believe a machine like this is... Uh, probably usually equipped with about a five horsepower engine.